Welcome back to the presentation on resolution and independence by William Wordsworth, which is also titled as Leech Gatherer. We have read the text previously. Now let's go and try to analyze it. In this particular segment, I would like to thematically uh, appreciate the first eight stanzas of the poem, wherein an introduction to the leech gatherer or the environment or a circumstance in which this particular poem is set is introduced. So how does the poem begin? There was a roaring in the wind last or all night. The rain came heavily and fell in floods. But now the sun is raising, calm and bright. The birds are singing in the distant woods. So what is it telling you all? So there was, so it is an introduction to past yesterday or previous night, roaring in the night, in the wind all night. So the previous night was roaring. It was having very troublesome environment. And there is the first two lines introduced to this. The third line of the poem begins with the conjunction but. But is a conjunction that introduces you to a contrasting idea which has been introduced in the previous half. But now. So then or there to now. How is it now? Now it is very jubilant. The sun is rising calm and bright. The birds are singing in the distant woods. Over his own sweet voice, the stock bro stock dough broods. The jaymakers answer as Macpiece chatter. You can imagine uh, some of the very vibrant, powerful, all colorful, very pleasant environment at this minute. And that is quite contradictory or contrast to the previous night, which had roaring winds, there was rain, and everything fell in floods. Now, what about the air? All the air is filled with pleasant voice noises of water. So the pleasant noises of water can also be heard. All things that love the sun are out of doors. So you can just imagine a poet from the European context, a cold uh, land for that matter, how important the sun is for them. And uh, as a contrast to the winter and the rainy seasons to them, the summer and the sunny moments are really very pleasant thing for them. So it is a kind of a jubilant situation for all of them who read the text, who are there as characters in the text, who are there, whoever loves the sun are out of doors. The sky rejoices in the morning's birth. Morning's birth, look at the metaphor. Now, it, it's, a, it's a personification. Uh, morning's birth, the birth of the morning. Well, how does it look to you? The grass is bright with the raindrops. On the moors, the hare is running races with her mirth. One of the very uh, pleasant visual imagery. The hare that runs races in her mirth, happiness. And with her feet, she from the flashy earth raises a mist. How beautiful it should be. Green grass, mist flowing. That glittering in the sun runs with her all the way. Whatever she doth run. So she runs all the way wherever she could run. And it's all in the form of mentioning about the race run by a hare. It is talking about the mind that grows in the... In the uh, wild out there uh, when the sun is out. So look at the contrast that is being celebrated here. The third stanza opens with an introduction to the speaker and that begins with a subjective pers first person narration and that says, I was a traveler. Look, at, uh, Please do make a note of the uh, letter T as capital one. I was a traveler then upon the moor. So the moor is already mentioned. And in that background, you have the traveler who is traveling. And I saw the hair that raised about with joy. We have talked about the joy of the hair in the previous stanza as well. And now the speaker also readmits 
his observations on the hair and its race. And then the third line, which also begins with the subjective first person uh, narration. I heard, see, I saw, I, I was, I saw and I heard. Line 15, 16, 17 mentions very exclusive reference to the subjective first person narration. I heard the woods and distant waters roar. This particular word roar is a reminiscence of the first stanza where the wind was roaring. Roar is a sound laid by lions and it's a very uh, magnificent sound. And uh, there is a reference to such a, uh, such a, such a very auditory image of roaring sound and waters that roar personification once again or heard them not look at the kind of uh, conjectures that play here uh, in this particular point at one point of the time you have a very jubilant note and at this uh, immediately as a follow or heard them not now listening or the sound and the silence that go always hand in hand and both rejoice or or the speaker rejoices from both the or heard them not as happy as a boy the pleasant season did my heart employ my heart my old remembrances went from me wholly and all the ways of men so vain and melancholy so what did go so what did this particular image of the hair that was running from here and there brought in his memory it gave a flashback a kind of a reminiscence remembrances and that went from me wholly and he talks about the ways of men nature behavior many emotions that he showed and so vain and the last word is melancholy the kind of a very profound feeling that lingers in the mind of a man or a woman look at the fourth stanza that begins with the conjunction but as it sometimes chanced from the might of joys in minds uh, that that can be uh, that can no further go so there is a situation that you can go to some extent emotionally and then it stops there as high as we have uh, mounted in the light in our dejection uh, do we sink as low so as you go high there is also the depth to it and fears and fancies thick upon me came dim sadness so melancholy look at the continuation sadness blind thoughts i need not nor could them i am not i'm not able to recollect or could name them so they came one by one many critics bring a kind of a comparison or a kind of a reference to this to the kind of pessimistic views that were going by the time of french revolution industrialized england and so on and so forth um, so that's how uh, things are observed so it is not just the nature out the nature inside the views outside the views inside both juxtaposed at certain point of the time so the previous night and the morning is juxtaposed and these juxtapositions really pop up in the form of uh, the nature out there in the form of hair and the mind inside the poet's mind that really take his ideas ahead so these are the first four stanzas and the next four stanzas also give a continuation to the same idea until uh, the leech gatherer is introduced. I shall get back to you with that lecture. Thank you.